Hi, welcome to my train room. I'm Rainer. Today I'm going to be building a control panel for the uh, power routing to the lower deck of my layout. Um, and so what I'm going to be using is a bunch of small double pole, double throw switches. And this is one of the control panels. That's another one. That's another one from previous layouts I've had. These two are from my previous layout. This is one from another layout from many years ago. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just reuse these switches. So I have to remove them from here and uh, I'll have to desolder the um, back of the switches. So um, I'll have to remove all the wires and then get all the switches cleaned up and get them ready to install the new panel. In preparation for this, what I have done is I have this new panel ready. It's just a couple of pieces of wood on the back, some half inch plywood that I cut. Same plywood I'm using for the decking on the uh, bench work. And this front piece is a piece of one eighth inch, roughly one eighth inch thick FRP panel. It's that fiberglass reinforced panel. I had some leftover pieces from a camping trailer that I built last fall. So um, what I've done on here is built this frame, screwed it on here, and you can see it in this other camera shot. I have basically drawn a like a linear um, track plan of what I have on my lower deck and figured out where I want to have my power brakes in the um, track work and where I want to put the switches on here. So all of these little dots are where I'm going to mount switches and these lines, little lines basically indicate graphically on here where I'm going to have the brakes in the track to um, break the circuit in the track. So. The first thing I need to do is get to these panels and remove all the switches. Then what I'll need to do is drill holes in this new panel, mount the switches in there, and then start the soldering. So what I'll do first of all here is I will just start uh, doing the desoldering of the wires. Uh, for that, I need my soldering iron, a pair of pliers, which I need to grab. I didn't forgot to grab those and potentially if there's a lump of solder is a solder sucker and i'll show you once i get going how that works um, cool little device um, probably possibly don't need it but if there's any lumps of solder that are getting out of control it's a great way to deal with those so with that i will start working on this i am going to switch to the overhead camera so you can see what i'm doing uh, I'm not going to show you the whole process, but uh, you'll be able to see how I do it, how I desolder the wires if you're reusing switches. And um, I'll also go over how the switches work because I know for some people um, electricity is a bit of a mystery. Some people, they know a lot more than I do. So I'm just going to start with the basics as I go to just try and explain how all of this is going to work. So with that, I will go find a pair of pliers and uh, switch to the other camera and then we can continue from there. First thing I need to do is turn the soldering iron on. Let's get rid of the piece of paper. And let's start with the simpler panel of the two. So I'm not going to be using most of these scraps of wire. So I think what I will do is uh, let's just pull the insulation off of them. It'll make it a lot easier to be able to remove the wires one at a time. So what I've done with this uh, panel when I built it, and I'm going to do something similar with the new one. If you notice on both of these, I have a terminal block on the back and then the power feeds going to the switches. And I'm going to be doing the same thing on the new one. So the way I'm going to wire my layout, I'm going to wire it to be ready for both DC and DCC. And how I'm going to do that is I will have one set of power feeds coming in to the switch panel that comes from my DC power supply. The second set of power feeds will be from my DCC power controls. And uh, the idea is that each one of these double pole, double throw switches will be supplying the power to a section or block or area of track. And with the switch, we can, I can then select whether I'm going to be powering that track with 
DC or DCC. This is not really any different than the old style, and that's where these were from, was the old style where you had block control. In, in this case, when on my previous layout, I didn't have DCC, but I did have two DC power packs or controllers. So one of them was a uh, Rail Power 350, a Tech 4, an MRC with a walk around, and the other one was an older unit, and I can't remember the number on it. Uh, the reality is that even though I had it wired for two power packs, since it's only me running the trains, I would never be running more than one train simultaneously. Um, but that's the way I, I had it wired. But now I actually have more reason to wire it with a dual system because I do want to eventually switch over to DCC, but I can't do that all at once. I can't afford it, nor do I have the time to do that. And uh, I currently don't have any of my locomotives that are set up for DCC, but I do have a couple of decoders to install in locomotives, so I'm going to get going on that soon. So I need a way to try to test those out. So I do want to wire the whole system for DCC. Um, and I also have one of these. I have an NCE power cab that I picked up used from somebody. Um, and uh, I'm going to wire that for my DCC portion. And my Tech 4 Rail Power 350 with the walk around will be my DC power. So that's the idea. Um, so I'm going to remove everything from this panel and uh, then go from there. So removing the wires is relatively simple. Just take the soldering iron and just Heat it up so the solder melts and then pull it off. So none of these are really having a lot of solder in them, although there's a little bit of solder stuck in the hole of one of these. So I like to, when I put the wires on, stick the end through the hole and then solder it in place. So this one and this one are nice and clear, but this one over here has a little bit of solder stuck in the hole. So what I'll do with this is I will melt it, get it liquid with my soldering iron, and go like this, and then the solder sucker pulls it all out. When I go like this, a little bit of solder falls out. Same thing with this one, I've got it prepped. Just get it nice and hot, put it down close, push the button, and it sucks the solder right out of there, which immediately hardens inside the tube and then you push it out in the plunger. If you look in here, there's a little plunger that pushes it out when you push it out. And then when you push the button like this, it sucks the solder in. So it's a very convenient little tool if you're doing any reworking of soldered connections, get yourself a solder sucker. So rather than make you guys watch the entire process of me desoldering switches, and cleaning them up. I've jumped ahead. I finished up that process. I have mounted the switches into the new panel and I have also soldered some of the wires in and I'm kind of, I'd say two thirds of the way to getting it done. So if you look at the panel, what I've done is I've drilled the holes, I've mounted the switches. As I mentioned in my earlier part of this video, this is a line drawing of my lower deck of my layout. I've also mounted the connections for my NCE power cab DCC system in here. And I have on a separate piece of wood here, currently held in place by this clamp, a terminal strip that is going to be my connections to the wires that actually go to the rails or to the tracks. So what I've done is, this is the DCC connections right here, and these are the two main power outputs from it to power the track. So what I've done is run a set of wires over to this terminal block on this side. And from there, I have run wires to one side of each double pole, double throw switch. So the idea is that the DCC system is providing power to one side or one pair of terminals on each one of these switches. I have also soldered wires to the center terminals of each switch 
and those wires go to a pair of, from each switch goes to a pair of screw terminals on this terminal block. So the idea is, for example, from this switch, the power would come in from the DCC system to the one side, and if the switch is thrown the correct direction, the power would then, from the DCC system, would then come out through these wires to these two screw terminals, and then from this side, it would continue to the rails to wherever it is on the layout. Now, these two in particular will be to my steel mill area of the layout. This switch, if you remember seeing the other side, is the um, track power to my actual turntable that I'm going to be installing, which, by the way, showed up in the mail, so I'm going to be starting to install that shortly, and that will be another video. These four switches here are to the four tracks that I am initially planning to put around the turntable for the locomotives to park on, so I can control the power to each of those tracks um, individually. And the rest of these switches are for different blocks or areas of the railroad. For example, the switch on this side will be the power leading in to the helix. The other side of these switches will be receiving power from another set of wires that I still need to solder on, and that will be coming from my DC power control, which is a uh, MRC Rail Power 350, a Tech 4, and has a walk around control. That's what I've been controlling the layout with so far, and powering the layout with so far. What this will allow me to do is it will allow me to choose either DC or DCC as the control power system for any block of my railroad individually. So I can have some DC locomotives sitting in my yard and have the power set to control those from the DC system or have the power turned right off to those tracks while I'm running DCC on the rest of the layout. Or I can just decide to pull out one of my DC locomotives so I can turn the DCC off to the entire system, park my, park my DCC locomotives, once I have some, uh, in one section of the layout and turn the DCC off to the rest of the layout and run DC locomotives only. So it gives me the flexibility. That's why I'm going through all of this wiring. Just for... Um, a little bit of information about how these double pull throw double throw switches work is there are six terminals on the back and when the switch is in the center off position none of the terminals are connected to each other when you move the switch in one direction the center terminals are now connected to one pair of terminals on the back when you move the switch in the far opposite direction the center terminals are now connected to the other pair of connectors on the back. So the idea is that if I'm running the two power leads from one control system to here, and then from the other control system to the other side, toggling the switch one way or the other will make a connection between this side and the center, or this side in the center, but never both at the same time. Having the switch in the middle means that section of track is getting no power at all. Now, if you were wanting to run your model railroad on DCC only, have no intention of running DC locomotives on it, you don't need to do any of this that I'm doing. You're better off to just run a couple of bus wires under your railroad and drop feeders down like so many other people on YouTube are talking about and showing you how to do. That's a better way to model wire your model railroad if you're only going to run DCC. The problem with doing that, just doing it that way, and why I'm not doing it is because I want to still have a fairly high level of control when I'm running DC. If you run deep bus wires all over your layout, run feeders down. It mean, means that you have a good constant power supply to all of your tracks, which you need for DCC. But it means you can't individually, not very easily, turn separate sections of track off or on. And if you want to switch to DC, you kind of have to switch your whole layout 
or a whole big area of your layout to run on DC or DCC. You can't very easily control small areas. And that's what I'm trying to do because I still want to have the flexibility of having the block control for my DC system until I get my DCC system fully functioning and I have enough locomotives to run that way. On another note, if you are wanting to do something like this, make sure you buy the right type of switches. Both of these switches are double pull, double throw switches. This switch is a double pull, double throw, center off switch. So in the center position, it's off. If I move it one way, it make, makes a connection through one set of contacts. If I make it move it the other way, it makes a connection through the other set of contacts. Where I move it to, it stays there until I move it back. This switch is a double pull, double throw, momentary contact switch. So the contacts work the same way on the back as on the other one, except that this switch, when you move it to one side and let go, it goes back to the middle. So it never stays in the on position. The reason I have these switches is because I use these for controlling things like Pico switch motors, uh, because I can run the power, main power in, run one set of wires to one half of the solenoid, the other set of wires to the other side of the solenoid, and depending on which way I move this switch, that's the direction the turnout or switch points move, the turnout motor moves. So these have a use, but you don't want to use them for something like this. The other thing you can get that you have to be careful of because you may not want this. Now this one is a single pole. It only have, has one set of terminals rather than two, but it will work to illustrate a point. This one has an on in one direction and an on in the other direction, but there is no center off position. Again, you can buy these switches in that format as well, but they don't have a center off position. You don't want those because you want to be able to turn the track power off completely uh, at some point. So you want to make sure that you have a switch that is a double pull, double throw, that allows you to choose which source you use for power or have it off completely in the middle. So that's just one of those little things to look out when you're look out for when you're buying switches. Just make sure that they actually stay on when you want them to and that they do have the ability to turn off completely. Anyway, this was just a quick overview of what I'm doing with the control panel. I hope it makes some sense to you. If you have any questions, please ask me and I can try to explain them more. Uh, sometimes I know when it comes to electrical things, I understand it. I may speak too quickly or may go over it too quickly. So if there's something that doesn't make sense in this, please ask and I'll try to explain it in another video or I'll explain it in the comments or whatever. I will try to get the rest of this soldered up and installed and then I'm going to be starting to wire my tracks and I will have another video showing you that how I end up actually uh, running the wires and how I end up isolating the sections of track one from another. I don't like using the insulated rail joiners. I have some, I've tried them, I don't like them. I have my own way of doing it and uh, it's not unique to me, but I'll show you how I end up doing that. And I also, like I mentioned, have a brand new Walters uh, 90 foot manual turntable to mount into the hole over there. So I want to get that installed and show you how that works out. I have opened the box and that's all I've done to look at it. So uh, it's going to be a surprise to me. It'll be interesting uh, to see how that all works out. Hopefully it works well. And then I also bought some more track so that I can finish up the rest of my track work to go up here to the upper staging. So I've got going to have that coming up in a, in a later video. Um, so until then, um, thank you for watching. And uh, if you want to make sure you see the rest of what I'm up to down here, then please subscribe. And, and hopefully uh, this was at least somewhat educational or entertaining or something. So uh, if so, click the like button and uh, thanks. See you next time.